listen to this story that we will tell to you. The story of the minnow, five passengers and crew. With Gilligan aboard the ship, the skipper by his side. An unexpected storm came up and tossed them with the tide. They found themselves a shipwrecked clan lost on Gilligan's Isle. Gilligan and Skipper, the millionaire, his wife. The movie star professor and Mary Ann began a brand new life. What creatures they encountered. What riddles did they face. What mysteries did haunt them in a strange but happy place. On the new adventures of Gilligan, Gilligan, all on Gilligan's Island. And boola boola bool. Score another point for the snooty finishing school. What's with Mrs. Howell? Uh, well, she was browsing to her high school yearbook and began yearning to be 18 again. I can't imagine why. That was before she met me. I'd say she's beginning to believe she's 18. Are you okay, Mrs. Howell? Why, yes, of course. A little water never hurt an 18-year-old, you know. Mrs. Howell, you are no longer 18 years old. Oh, is today my birthday? Sweet 19 and never been kissed. What I meant, Mrs. Howell, was it's all right to dream and use your imagination, but you shouldn't start believing something's true only because you want it to be true. The professor's right. We all live in a fantasy world at times. But we can't run away from the real world because we like things better in our dream worlds. Yeah, sometimes I dream that I'm really not beautiful, but you'll never catch me believing it. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Which one of you did it? Did what? I asked the questions around here. Where were you on the night of the 33rd? There was no night of the 33rd. Somebody stole it, huh? Watson, check them out. Hmm, <laughs> an anchor. That can mean only one thing. What? You're wearing a boat on your head. <laughs> hey, thanks, Watson. Okay, Sherlock, what's the bet? Sherlock? Oh, Mr. Holmes, how fortunate. I'm doing a report on your books for my senior project. Swell. Not only does Lovey think she's 18, but now Gilligan thinks he's Sherlock Holmes. That's not who I think I really am. It's just that Stubby and I were listening to a detective program on the radio. Our spy satellite has discovered a secret island, an island with inhabitants. We must know who these people are and what their secret mission is that they're involved in. This is a job for Agent B. You called, Prime Minister? Yes, B. You'll take a submarine to the secret island and spy on the inhabitants. This is a job you must not bumble, B. Bumblebee, get it? <laughs> I'm sick of his corny jokes. I think I'll change my name to Z. Now before you go, uh, perhaps you'd like a glass of uh, Zyder Z? Zyder Z, that place in Holland, <laughs> get it? <laughs> Ah, oh, the hammock feels good. Yeah. Good night, Skipper. Pleasant dreams, little buddy. <sighs> yes, Watson. What, what is it? What a great morning. Time for setting up exercises, everybody. <laughs> oh, no. 
nothing like brisk exercise for keeping the body trim, uh -uh, I always say. <laughs> Exercise is good for staying in shape. Of course, we younger women don't have that problem. <laughs> Uh-oh. If Mrs. Howell doesn't stop believing she's 18, there's going to be trouble. A good massage gets the blood flowing first thing in the morning. <laughs> hey, where's Gilligan? Why isn't he doing his exercises? Oh, he is, in a way. Hey, Gilligan, wake up! Gosh, am I tired after that dream. Dream? Yeah, I dreamt I was Sherlock Holmes and I was on the island with a lot of famous people. Cleopatra, Florence Nightingale, Mata Hari, Merlin the Magician, Columbus, Daniel Boone, and the Mysterious Stranger. We often dream about historical characters and unidentified strangers, Gilligan. I know, but this was like it was real, especially the part when we radioed for help to get off the island. That alone makes it unreal, Gilligan. You know the radio can't be used to send messages. It couldn't be in the dream either until the mysterious stranger showed me step by step how to fix it. Skipper. Gilligan, I was uh, wondering, do you remember how the mysterious stranger showed you how to fix the radio? It was only a dream, Skipper, remember? Besides, I'd probably have to dream it again to remember how. <laughs> Come on, Professor, it's worth a try. Skipper, it won't work. Getting Gilligan to go to sleep won't guarantee that he'll have that same dream again. Yes, but if he does, why, we'd be able to fix the radio and send a message for help, huh? That's right. Gilligan always talks in his sleep. We'll record every word he says. Oh, we've got to get Gilligan to dream that dream again. If it did work, I'd cheer. Bivye and sis boom ba, the snooty finishy school. Ra ra ra. One gets wet a lot, but it's so much fun pretending to be young again. Look, this whole thing is absolute nonsense. Getting that radio to send messages is as unrealistic as Mrs. Howell being 18 again, or as unrealistic as Gilligan's mysterious stranger. Won't be long, folks. Gilligan's taking a nap, and he'll soon be dreaming away. Did you set the tape recorder? Yeah, it'll record everything he says in his sleep, including the instructions on how to fix the radio to make it send messages. If he dreams the same dream again. And scientific probability mitigates the occurrence of such a somnambulistic phenomenon. Oh, Professor, you're studying Latin, too. What class are you in? I am not in any class, Mrs. Howell. Oh, dear, Professor, you shouldn't be playing hooky, you know. Okay, Professor, so you don't think Gilligan will dream the same dream again. But it's worth a try. I think I'll take a nap, too. Uh-oh, I can't step on Gilligan's hammock or I'll wake him. I'd better jump into my hammock. Did I wake you, little buddy? No, I wasn't asleep. This tape recorder made a big lump under my pillow. Why don't you just step in my hammock like you always do? <laughs> it's no good. He wasn't asleep. We've just got to get Gilligan to sleep. How? OK, let's see you put it right over the plate. Strike one, huh? <laughs> yeah. Strike two. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, let her rip. Ready, outfield? By the time the ball comes back down, the score will be 100 to nothing. Now's my chance. Ah, two of the Islanders. Now to see what they are up to. Lullaby. And good night. Hi, Ginger. Hey, hearing lullabies always makes me want to go to sleep. Then why aren't you going to sleep? Well, if I wasn't awake to hear the lullaby, I wouldn't want to go to sleep. There has to be a way to get Gilligan to sleep. How? He's as energetic as a jitterbug. Jitterbug? Why, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> Oh, oh, my dear, will you act your age? I am. Flatfoot Fluji with a floy, floy. Hey! <laughs> oh, dear. Does this mean you won't be taking me to the prom? Gosh. Oh, just watching the house dance made me oh, tired. That's it. You know how, when somebody yawns, everybody else starts to yawn. Suggestion, you mean? Yeah, I'm gonna make a suggestion. I mean, that's called suggestion, wanting to yawn when we see others yawn. Whatever it's called, here's my plan. Now is my chance to observe all of them. And this time, I'll stay awake. Hi, everybody. Oh, hi. Hey, Gilligan. <laughs> yes, hi. Oh, Gilligan. Uh, oh. Oh. Um, uh, uh. Oh, gosh, I'm standing still, but next to them I feel like a jitterbug. Oh, how exciting. So do I. I should have said I felt like a waltz. <laughs> you go first. I match the three. You need a four. Wait a minute. One, two dots. You need a four. Okay, two dominoes. And two dots. Two plus two equals four. <laughs> For a minute I thought you were trying to cheat me. <laughs> By George, what a boon it would be to have that monkey for an accountant. Boon, that's it. Mr. Howell, how'd you like to be Daniel Boone? Was he rich? No, but he was in Gilligan's dream. What are you saying, Skipper? We can't make Gilligan go to sleep to dream, but we can make his dreams happen while he's awake. Each of us can make believe we're one of the people in his dream, and maybe that way it'll all come back to him. All well and good, except for one thing. There's no mysterious stranger. <laughs> okay, remember everybody, when Gilligan comes back from gathering firewood, we make believe we're the famous people who were in his dream. And we make believe he's Sherlock Holmes. Here he comes now. What's everybody doing, Skipper? Playing charades? I'm not the Skipper, I'm Columbus. Oh, you're playing cities. Can I be Pasadena? I'm Christopher Columbus Gilly. I mean, Mr. Holmes. Gosh, Professor. Correction, Mr. Holmes. Merlin. Merlin, the magician. This is a job for Florence Nightingale. Take off your shoe, Mr. Holmes. I'll have to bandage your foot while it's bare. 
Uh, a bear, did you say? <laughs> oh, oh, don't worry, Mr. Holmes. Uh, Dan Boone is here to take care of bears and wolves. Wolves? Does that mean Caesar and Mark Antony return us to woo me, Cleopatra? Alas, such burden to have beauty which flows from me as the Nile flows to the sea. And yet, what matter the kingdom of Egypt if one has not beauty and charm and... Psst. Cleo, you're overacting. Oh, I guess I got carried away. It's been so long since I acted and heard an audience cheer. Cheer? <laughs> Uh-oh, she's forgotten she's supposed to be Mata Hari. Mata Hari! Mata Hari! Raise your voices to the skies. Let's hear a cheer for all our spies. Ra, ra, ra! Well, she's got the idea anyway. Hmm. I must be having my dream again. Any interesting cases lately, Mr. Holmes? Why, uh, uh yes. Watson and myself are working on a case right now. I heard it, and now I see it. But I don't believe it. Yes, uh, Watson and I are working on the case of... of, uh... <laughs> the case of, uh... <laughs> Thank you, Watson. The case of... <laughs> uh, I'm Donald Boone, uh, tracking a bear. It's a bear. Uh, stand back, everybody, while Daniel Boone takes care of this varmint. <laughs> Come back, varmint, and fight like a man. <laughs> man, ho! Man? Dost thou mean Caesar and Mark Antony returneth to woo me? <laughs> You're right, Watson. It's a mysterious stranger. Mysterious stranger? Mysterious stranger? Oh, it's him. The dream is real. And I'm really 18. Oh, Father Time is on the skids. Let's hear a cheer for all us kids. Ra, ra, ra! I'm getting out of here. Wait, wait. You didn't tell us how to fix the radio. If I report this to the minister, he'll think I've been seeing things. I think I'm seeing things. <laughs> They're right behind me. I'll have to hide. Hmm. If my scientific training tells me that man wasn't a dream, then my scientific training must tell me that that submarine wasn't a dream. You're right, Merlin. There wasn't any submarine in my dream. There should have been, Holmes. That way, we could have used the submarine to get off the island. Uh, uh, what's wrong, my dear? I mean, uh, uh, Mata Hari. I... I can't run any, any longer. Uh, yes, you can, Mata. We've got to catch this mysterious stranger. This boom ba and yippity yi o. Come on, 18 year old, go, go, go. Oh, Thurston, darling, act your age. Well, we've all been kidding ourselves. Yeah, we really weren't those famous people, and there wasn't any mysterious stranger. And the submarine. That was real. I'm going to tell the Prime Minister that there wasn't really an island here and that there weren't any people. In fact, maybe I dreamed the whole thing. It's going. No, it isn't. It's gone. Well, we've all learned not to live completely in a dream world. Yeah, the submarine was a real way to get off the island, but we were so busy believing the dream was real that we ignored the real world. We were foolish, but dreams are important. Without them, we wouldn't have great inventions or discoveries. Yeah, and dreaming and imagining can be fun, too. But that's the last time I let my imagination run away with me. But don't let the experience stop you from using your imagination, Gilligan. Just be sure to always keep sight of the difference between what's real and what's imaginary. I will, Professor. 
<sighs> Gosh, all that running made me tired. I think I'll take a nap. I just hope he doesn't dream of another way to get off the island. I remember. I remember how the mysterious stranger told me to fix the radio. How? He told me, uh, yes, yes, uh, go on. He told me to take it to the radio repair shop on the other side of the island. <laughs> radio repair shop on the other side of the island? Boy, that's really a dream. <laughs> Buddy, I can say I learned a lesson about keeping my dream worlds and the real world in their proper places. Me too, Skipper. And now that I know that, I'm never going to be afraid to dream again, because I might come up with a great idea dreaming. Why would you be afraid to dream anyway? I'm not, but my Uncle Freddy was. Your Uncle Freddy? Yeah, he loved hot dogs, you know. He did? Yeah, he'd eat hot dogs all the time. Even when he went to a restaurant, all he ever ate was hot dogs. And then he had that terrible dream. Yeah? He dreamt he was marooned on an island like us. And the island was filled with hot dogs. Everywhere he looked, he saw nothing but hot dogs. After that terrible dream, he was afraid to dream. Well, if he loved hot dogs so much, why was it terrible to dream that he was on an island full of them? In his dream, he was a hot dog, too. Good night, little buddy. Good night, Skipper. See ya. <laughs>